We're back, Dave Locker and Avad Shopper. And I must say, we got off to a hot start. It's not often that you have absolute smash spots when you're betting football, but the Hall of Fame game was. We move on to the next one. Now, I'm going to be doing this every single slate of games with you guys. We're going to break down every game. So for tonight, we're breaking down everything for Thursday. Might already be Thursday when you're watching. And then we'll do all Friday's games, Saturday, Sunday. You get it throughout the entire preseason. And if anyone tells you that betting preseason is the, you know, the activity of a degenerate, well, it doesn't make sense. You can absolutely find edges in preseason. That is entirely why you are limited on how much you can bet. To think that you can't find more edges in the preseason than you can in the regular season, the most heavily bet sport out there, particularly NFL regular season, is crazy. So we're doing it today. We got the Titans, we got the Ravens, and then we got the Patriots and Giants. All of that right here in today's video. Let's win some money. Let's talk some picks. And before we do, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Helps us greatly, and we appreciate it. There's only two games to kick off week one on Thursday, but we'll start with the Giants and the Patriots. Giants are laying two and a half points on the road in Foxborough. And honestly, I don't care about Bill Belichick's record against the Giants in the preseason. Uh, and I'm sure you'll see plenty of other analysts out there say that they do and that New York has, you know, the edge against the Patriots in preseason play and that we have a big sample. But none of that matters. And the reason it doesn't matter is because the, the games, most of the games that these teams have played, at least in, in recent, you know, the past decade and a half, they've all been week four of the preseason where Belichick doesn't really care as much, clearly, and has a career record of eight and 12. He's 15 and seven, though, in week one as the head coach in New England. And since 2010, he's nine and three with an average margin of victory of 12 points in those wins. Actually, they've won three straight games in week one by at least nine points. And six of their last nine wins of nine plus points since 2010. Those are numbers I like. And for what it's worth, they're two and one against the Giants uh, in week one meetings in the Belichick era. But that goes back a long time. It means nothing. So not really sure why I mentioned it. But it's pretty obvious that Bill Belichick has taken the preseason pretty damn seriously over the last few seasons. He's nine and two over the last three years, 13 and six over the last five. And it's also been reported that his offense hasn't looked particularly great in practice, in camp, which suggests that we could see a couple of drives from the starters as well. Uh, and last season, the starters played two series, which isn't bad. Now, on the other side of this game, the Giants are actually two and a half point favorites at Gillette Stadium, almost certainly, almost certainly because first year head coach Brian Dable said that the starters are going to play. Now, Coach speak is generally bullshit in these situations, unless they explicitly say that players won't play or they explicitly state how much they expect them to play. But even the latter part of that can be misleading. You have to make some assumptions on your own if you're betting the preseason. I welcome you guys to do that, but here are my preseason uh, pre assumptions for this game. It's a Giants team that has an insane history of injuries recently. You're talking Saquon Barkley to Daniel Jones to Kenny Galladay and a lot more. And it probably would, would behoove Brian Dable as a new head coach to not run these guys out there for a full half of football. He said they're going to play, but then he said he doesn't know how long they're going to play for. This could be one series. This could, this could be very minimal playing time. So I'm not reading into this as much. And quite frankly, even if I was, the two and a half points suggest that that's still a lot on the road for this team. So even though you've got everyone, new offensive system, new defensive system, how much do you really want to risk these guys that have all been injured? Not to mention that no matter who's on the field, probably going to have a ton of kinks to work out because they've got a brand new system in New York, and now they're going into New England. So yeah, Terod Taylor is going to get some work. He's a quality backup, but Brian Hoyer is fine for New England. And then you'll probably see the second half with like Davis Webb for New York, who has never attempted a pass in the NFL, and Bailey Zappi for New England. I don't see a distinct edge there at all, even if Webb is familiar with Dable's scheme. So I'm taking the two and a half points with New England at home with the longest tenured coach in the NFL who has actually cared about winning preseason games. And if you want to hit the money line at plus 135 instead, it's totally reasonable to me. And by the way, if you guys are going to tail me on either of these games or you have your own bets, go ahead and make it risk-free with the link down below for BetMGM. Meaning that if you were to put 10 or 20 or 50 or even up to $1,000 on either of these games, well, that means that you could go to sleep. You could fall asleep 
missed half of the game. And you could sleep peacefully knowing that when you wake up, you either win and you got a little boost to your bankroll or you lose. And because it's a risk-free bet, you're getting it right back. Win-win situation. Take advantage of it, not just at BetMGM, but any book that gives you an opportunity to take advantage of promotions. They will not be here forever, I promise you. But with all of these states recently opening things up and about to do so, you're getting these opportunities. They want your business, and BetMGM is one of those. So preseason football, whether it's the Titans, Raiders, Patriots, Giants, doesn't matter. Take that money. Use the link in the pinned comment. All you got to do is deposit 10 bucks or more and put it on any of these teams or bet whatever you want, really, uh, and get your money back if you lose. Link is in the description and the pinned comment down below. BetMGM. Take advantage of the free money when you get an opportunity to do so. Second and final game for this Thursday slate, you got the Titans getting three and a half on the road against the Ravens. Very low, 31 and a half point total for this game. This might, though, be the craziest stat you've ever heard when it comes to preseason. John Harbaugh, over the last five seasons, is 20 and 0. 20 and 0. And for his career, he's 40 and 12 in the preseason. Oh, and he's 12 and one in week one games. Those are some of the most ridiculous numbers and stats for any preseason, regular season, postseason that you're going to find. Not to mention too, that his Ravens have also won by four or more. We'll cover that more in a second. I'll tell you why it's relevant. Nine times in those 12 games that they have won in week one over the John Harbaugh era. So it's the preseason. I get that. And wild shit is going to happen. But Harbaugh has the most insane preseason record I've ever seen. Literally, it, it is historic. There has never been a better preseason record. And while it won't last forever, by God, it hasn't stopped yet. And finally, finally, if that's not enough, the Ravens are 9-0 and at home in the John Harbaugh era in week one. They're also 18-1-1 and against the spread over their recent 20-game winning streak. It doesn't matter if Lamar Jackson isn't playing or Mark Andrews or J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, or some top defensive starters. And if the other starters are limited or watching from the sidelines, Harbaugh plays to win. It's obvious. And he's clearly instilled that belief and that mentality in his players as well. And he'll be playing at home in front of the Ravens faithful, where the Ravens have never lost under John Harbaugh in week one. Not to mention, I actually don't mind Tyler Huntley. Not as someone who's winning you a Super Bowl, obviously, but as someone who can run really well and is a strong player to have in for a decent amount of time in preseason if you're trying to win a game. He's kind of like Lamar Jackson light and should get a decent amount of run against Tennessee. On the other side of this one, with the Titans, Derrick Henry isn't playing for obvious reasons, and there's no way Robert Woods plays either. Last year, when the league shortened the preseason to three games, we saw Mike Vrabel hold uh, Ryan Tannehill out, A.J. Brown, and Henry out of week one, along with plenty of other starters. Mike Vrabel, in his career, four and seven in the preseason and two and one in week one. It's fine. Not much to go off of, though. And while people will make a lot out of this quarterback competition between third-round rookie Malik Willis and seventh-round Logan Woodside, former seventh-rounder Logan Woodside, I don't see how this helps the Titans' chances of winning at all, no matter who's out there for week one. I'm sure you saw this one coming, but I'm laying the three and a half with Baltimore. Yeah, it seems like a lot for the preseason, but you don't have to worry about key numbers here. They just don't matter. And while trends don't last forever, they are 18-1-1 and against the spread over their last 20 preseason games. They're undefeated at home in week one. They are 40 and 12 all time in the John Harbaugh era in the preseason. It's just not something I can bet against. Appreciate you guys watching. As always, let's make some money. We'll run this back tomorrow, the next day, the next day, and then a few more weeks until we get to the regular season. Peace.